Good morning and welcome to Midweek Connection on Wednesday, November 23rd. It's our special Thanksgiving almost day, uh, Midweek Connection. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to read our daily lectionary texts and talk about them a little bit and see what the Lord might have for us today. So thanks for coming in early today. I know you probably have like a million and a half cooking things to do. And a few. Yeah, very good. Um, <laughs> As, as do I, actually. I've got some cornbread to make for the stuffing. So nice. that's, that seems to be my, my task on these days. Anyway, let's uh, open in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your word. I ask, Lord, that we would hear clearly from you and that we would respond appropriately. We thank you for this day and this time. And we ask that you would bless it in the name of your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting this morning with Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture prophetic word today comes from Zechariah verses 12 verses uh, chapter 12 verses 1 through 10 the word of the lord concerning israel thus says the lord who stretched out the heavens and founded the earth and formed the human spirit within see i am about to make jerusalem a cup of reeling for all the surrounding peoples it will be against judah also in the siege against jerusalem on that day, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who lift it shall grievously hurt themselves, and all the nations of the earth shall come together against it. On that day, says the Lord, I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness. But on the house of Judah, I will keep a watchful eye when I strike every horse of the peoples with blindness. Then the clans of Judah shall say to themselves, the inhabitants of Jerusalem have strength through the Lord of hosts, their God. On that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a blazing pot on a pile of wood, like a flaming torch among sheaves, and they shall devour to the right and to the left all the surrounding peoples, while Jerusalem shall again be inhabited in its place in Jerusalem. And the Lord will give victory to the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem may not be exalted over that of Judah. On that day, the Lord will shield the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the feeblest among them on that day shall be like David and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord at their head. 
and on that day I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. And from the New Testament, we'll read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. And back to our psalm, Psalm 132. O Lord, remember in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Rise up, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you in the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your faithful shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my decrees that I shall teach them, their sons also forevermore shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priests I will clothe with salvation, and its faithful will shout for joy. There I will cause a horn to sprout up for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed one. His enemies I will clothe with disgrace, but on him his crown will gleam. And our final song today is Psalm 134. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord 
maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, I really like when we get uh, familiar passages combined with some unfamiliar passages. Um, I can't remember the last time I read Zechariah chapter 12. I'm thinking, <laughs> right. have I ever read Zechariah chapter 12? I'm sure that I have. Right. Um, but how about we jump back to that in a okay. second? Why don't we look okay. at a couple yes. other things first? We'll look at some of the familiar stuff first. So what is more familiar than Jesus and Zacchaeus? Right. I mean, even Easy. little kids. Right. Even know, little kids know. They know the Zacchaeus song. He was a wee little man, right? A wee little man was he. <laughs> he climbed up in a sycamore tree. So, um, so uh, this is, this is uh, uh, taking place towards the end of Jesus' ministry. He's on his mm -hmm. way to Jerusalem. He's passing through Jericho. Uh, we all know the history of Jericho, where it was the first place where... Um, uh, where Joshua came in and the whole Israelites uh, coming in into the promised land and that's the first battle they have to face uh, that is where Rahab the prostitute is saved because she had faith in God from uh, some sort of capacity looking at what was going on around her uh, we see that there are curses that were put on Jericho that when they would have the gates rebuilt it would cost the firstborn and when the walls were rebuilt it would cost the secondborn my first on those, but nonetheless, um, and so uh, Jericho has this uh, this huge um, history within right. the history of, of the Jewish people, mm -hmm. and it's even the story that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan. It was the people on their way to Jericho, um, and so here we have a tax collector, Zacchaeus, and he wants to see Jesus, and Jesus sees him, calls him down, goes to his house, and everybody gets upset with it. Right. And then Zacchaeus has some repentance, and with that repentance comes some restoration mm -hmm. um, and reconciliation. And then Jesus says, this is why the Son of Man came, to seek out and save the lost. Um, and, and I think about this uh, often in terms of this seeking and saving the lost. It's, it's a theme in Luke. We see a lot of it in Luke chapter 15 with the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and then the parable of the lost sons, basically. Right. Uh, and then you get the parable of the dishonest manager, all these things, and then you end up with Jesus flat out saying, I've come to save the lost, to seek out and save the lost. So the whole, if the whole of the mission of, of Jesus is to seek out and save the lost. Um, it seems rather odd to me that the people that were there were indignant at Jesus for for wanting to do that. Right. And I think that indignation comes from a, an all too real human tendency to uh, for us to compare ourselves to one another. I might have problems, but I'm not as bad as <laughs> right. that guy. Well, I didn't do that. Right. Right. Uh, and so, in a way, we feel as if um, the the privileges that we have or the relationships that we have are based on how good we are, what we have done, and therefore um, we've earned it. Right. And I think that's where they're at. They're like, look at everything we've done for you. We follow the law. We do all of these things. And yet this person who's done none of those things and you're welcoming him where's our where's our invitation right where's our welcome right when in fact it's it is it's right there in front of them as well they are also invited and welcomed right but they're so worried about seeing that Zacchaeus got something that like why wouldn't they just go to the dinner with Jesus and Zacchaeus right like they can be with Jesus also. You mean they would have to interact with that what? man? What? Who does that? <laughs> right. So, uh, so, so I think if we keep these things in, in, in the context, if Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, then I think everything else really starts to fall into place. Right. Um, if you jump over to the Ephesians passage, uh, this is what Paul writes to the Ephesians. These are all of the things that are going to be taking place because of what Jesus has done, the, the right. blessings and the honor and all and these things. The beginning of time, you know, before the foundation of the world, we were claimed, hmm. we were invited, we were welcomed, we were adopted, all of those things. Right. That was there before we were. Right. And so... Um, 
that whole idea of being adopted as his children, uh, according to the good pleasure of his will, freely bestowed by the beloved, um, marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of God's glory, uh, that this is what was intended, that God was re reconnecting his people to himself through Jesus Christ. Right. And and so I think that's where I wanted to see how this Zechariah passage comes in, in Zechariah chapter 12, because we get this really strange and kind of convoluted, um, you know, he's going to raise up Jerusalem, but Judah's going to have the problems, and then all of Israel is going to be this, but then all the other nations are going to be that, and it just seems like there's going to be tension and conflict between these, but uh, that God is giving victory to Judah and to the glory to the house of David, which we have referenced in some of our Psalms, right. that all of these things are uh, fulfillment of prophecy that Jesus himself will come from the line of Judah, will come specifically from the line of David. Um, and be present in Jerusalem. And so, and so sometimes I kind of wonder, though, because we know that Jerusalem has a, a troubled history. Sometimes they act faithfully. Sometimes they don't, the people there. Sometimes they're being blessed. Sometimes they're being destroyed. And so we have this whole passage that's saying that Jerusalem, um, that the feeblest in Jerusalem is going to be like David in terms of, uh, you know, if you think about David, uh, who himself was initially small of stature when he was the youngest right, of the he was, sons. Right, he was young, he, he was, was small. He, he was, was shepherding the flock, but he was still able to uh, slay the, the bear yes. and all those things and tear him apart and all that stuff because he was filled with the Lord's Spirit. And so there's this idea that we are becoming into like the image of David, which would be a foreshadow of becoming transformed into the image of Christ. Right. But even that verse 10, it's interesting that the, the uh, our reading today carried through with that, um, pouring out the spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child. And the New Testament takes this passage as a prophecy about the piercing of Jesus right. and how the people of Jerusalem ultimately killed the one that came to save them. Right. And so in some way, there will be a recognition of what has happened and people will uh, repent of that and be sorrowful uh, for that, looking on the one whom they've pierced. Uh, and weeps as one weeps over a firstborn. And hmm, I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want to go with that. Well, but. and Christ is the firstborn. <clears throat> right. You know, we just read that. I don't remember exactly what scripture it was, but last Sunday, you know, he is the firstborn of the of the resurrected. He, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he is God's only begotten. He, you know, and so as it's, you know, foreshadowing and looking at that, I mean, I, you know, that's, that reference there. Um, and, and I think what I'm troubled, uh, my, my trouble comes from how, how often do even believers, Christians who, mm -hmm. who have faith in Christ, um, we think about uh, all that Christ has done for us, but do we always... Um, do we always live into that reality or are we similar to Jerusalem where we can be close to God at one moment and then far from God at another? And so we even who believe in Jesus as being crucified, risen, uh, coming again, the forgiveness that he offers, I wonder if sometimes in our own capacity to continue to sin, um, if we... You know, if we were to look upon the one whom we have pierced and recognize with sorrow that he is paying that price, that penalty for our sins and for the, the fallenness of human condition, if that would change our own hearts again to be drawn closer to him. And I, I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just kind of toying with that well, idea. And the, right, and I, the recognition that the role that we played right. in his 
in his sacrifice, the role that, you know, we do play because he did have to sacrifice himself because of what we do. Right. <laughs> and so, right. And of course, like you said, if you, if you're staring that in the face, really looking at that, how does that impact right. choices that we make in, in the way that we choose to, to interact and to live? Mm. And I think it, it uh, maybe maybe it's because I've been reading too much about, um, I don't know, time and struggling with time and how if, if Jesus was at a singular point in history but paid the price and, and gave forgiveness for all sins that could have either sins that had already taken place and sins that were yet to take place. Like how in the world does that all kind of work right. within God's <laughs> mystery of God being outside of time. Right. So that's where the prophecies, he already knows what's going to happen. He can see all of these things because it's taking place in the eternal present for God. You know, right. uh, when God reveals himself to Moses, he, he says, you know, I... I am who I am, but that can be translated again as, um, you know, kind of I was who I was, and I will be who I will be, and I am who I am. It's this whole... Well, I think the Ephesians plays into that concept mm -hmm. of time as well, because all of these things were promised right, and, right. and set into place and set into motion according to his good pleasure, according to his good will, all of that verbiage that it uses. And so even right. before we existed... Right. In our time, those things were already set into motion right. and already, yep. um, already there. Already there. Right. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh well, I was I was actually going to kind of go a different direction. So finish okay. your thought on that, and then I was just. Oh gonna, no, I was done. I was just. Okay. Gonna, go ahead. So all right, Thanksgiving edition, right? Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, but I think these are very timely. I mean, you know, lectionary has a funny way of doing that, right? I think these are very timely passages in that um, we are going to gather with family, we are going to spend time together. People, you know, you, you hear people this whole month of Thanksgiving and they each day they try to look and find things that they're thankful for. And I think that there's, you know, these are such words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, even the Zacchaeus passage, because the reality is we are all the lost. Therefore, he came to seek each and every one of us. Right. And, um, and then back to the, the um, Zechariah passage that you were talking about how, um, you know, the becoming more like David, becoming more like Christ, the transformation that we can see in ourselves, all of those things as we are being invited and called and allowing God to work in our lives the things that can happen in our lives and the way that we can be transformed. I mean, what an incredible gift and invitation to be thankful for. Right. And so um, that that is what, as we were reading through this first time before we even started talking, I was like, it's welcome, it's invitation, it's chosen, it's all of those mm -hmm. things. Um, and the Psalms reiterated that mm -hmm. throughout all of the Psalms today. Um, and so it just... It fits very nicely with where we are does. all living in the context of this whole idea of, of giving thanks. And, and we have this incredible gift to give thanks for. I think you're, I think you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, way to wrap that up, Natalie. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we should be thankful. God has it all under control. It's all right. been planned out according to his perfect will. Um, and just what a blessing it is to, uh, to be in fellowship with other believers, to be, uh, to have an opportunity to be together with family. And, uh, and, you know, I, I guess maybe just to throw out another little thing on, on Thanksgivings <laughs> and families and stuff. It's like there, every family is going to have some strengths and every family is going to have some weaknesses and every family in scripture has, has problems. So I guess when we're gathered together, if we can maintain that thoughtfulness about what Christ has done for us um, and and have maybe that again I, I talk a lot, a lot about having the right combination of boldness yet humility it's right. you know we have been blessed but therefore we we can be uh, rejoicing and, right. and excited and so when, when we're together with our families remember how 
every one of us needs Jesus just as much as everybody else does. Well, and these promises that are extended to us are extended to them too. Right. Even if you really don't, don't like, like them. them. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's like the weird uncle. I know, you know right? It, is. It, Jesus, it, right. It, it doesn't matter. Jesus it, came to seek and save the, the lost. lost. And, and so uh, maybe our own hearts need to be reminded of that, transformed by that, that if we consider ourselves no longer lost, it's only because Jesus already sought us right. and saved us. And so, again, in humility, but also in confidence and boldness right. and, and, and trust that, that God is the one that's at work. And so as we celebrate Thanksgiving, as we celebrate all of these blessings, um, really for Christians, every day is a day of Thanksgiving, right? Every Should day be. is a day of praise. Um, and so, you know, the Psalm 134, come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you know, lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. That's not just a song that you sing on one day of the year and right. just continue to bless the Lord. Yeah. Well, okay. That's good stuff, I think. Um, it went a little bit differently than I thought it was going to, but that's okay. I think this is, uh, I'm, I'm happy to uh, share this time um, uh, in the Word together. So, thank you. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You want to close this? I would be happy to. Yeah. Gracious Lord, um, thank you. Thank you for the love that you have for us. Thank you for the blessings that you bestow on us. Thank you for the sacrifice that you offered for us. Thank you that you seek out and, um, and look for each and every one of us um, as lost children of yours. Thank you. Um, I pray that as people are celebrating the holidays this week, that they are safe coming and going. I pray that hearts are soft and that... Um, that we are welcoming and that we are inviting and that um, if opportunities present themselves that we can share um, Christ in those moments with family and um, we just praise you and uh, worship and glorify you and may we do that every day uh, not just um, on special days and in Jesus name we pray amen amen well, thanks for joining us today. I certainly hope and pray that you would all have a happy Thanksgiving. And if you are in San Angelo, you're welcome to come and worship with us again. Uh, we have our, we do not have Sunday school. No Sunday no school, Sunday school this, week, uh, this so. week, but worship at 1030. And, and we'll be celebrating communion together. We'll be celebrating communion together again. And I think it's just a great time. If you can't be present with us, you can always uh, watch online. And if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please do call the church and we'd be happy to hear those and listen to you and pray with you. Uh, but thanks for joining us today. Blessings to you. Take care. Bye-bye.